Hello everyone and welcome back to Clinical Cousins YouTube channel where today we're going to go over how the parasympathetic nervous system sends and receives messages throughout the body. So the parasympathetic nervous system has been called the craniosacral system because the cell bodies of the pre-G neurons which are located here in black are actually in the cranial nerves and the sacral segment of the spinal cord, specifically S2 to S4. Another difference between this system and the sympathetic system is that the parasympathetic ganglia, which are shown here in green, we can see that they're very, very close to or even inside of the affected tissue. So therefore, we must know intuitively that the parasympathetic pre-G neurons must have really long axons which extend all the way to the ganglia which are right next to that affected tissue or organ. Now, how does the parasympathetic nervous system send its messages? Well, we know that it follows the same chain as the sympathetic system with just a little twist. So, these pre-G neurons in the sacral spinal cord or those that use the cranial nerves will fire action potentials from their cell bodies all the way down their long axons and into the ganglia. These action potentials basically release acetylcholine from the pre-G neurons which then bind to the nicotinic 2 receptors or N2 receptors which are located on the cell bodies of our post-G neurons. So important thing to remember here is that these N2 receptors are on the cell bodies of the post-G neurons and they will become activated when acetylcholine is bound to them. These receptors will allow cation influx into the post-G neurons and this will eventually result in a depolarization. So what has happened so far? We've had a depolarization in the pre-G neuron which causes an acetylcholine release from the axon terminal. This acetylcholine binds to the N2 receptors on our post-G neurons and then our post-G neuron fires an action potential of its own. Now, when the, our post-G neuron fires an action potential of its own, it too will release acetylcholine from its beaded varicosities which lace over the affected tissue and then this will result in a binding to our muscarinic receptors. And these receptors are what cause the activation of the desired parasympathetic effects. Remember, acetylcholine bound to the muscarinic receptors, which is actually on the affected tissue, will have our desired parasympathetic effects, just like a slowed heart rate, constriction of our bronchioles, an increase in motility and function of our GI system, and it will even allow the male genitalia to fill with blood. Now, if you're interested, I haven't drawn them here, but there are some pretty important pathways that would be good to know if you suspect that your patient is suffering from an autonomic dysfunction of some sort. So the ciliary ganglion works to constrict the pupil. The pterygopalatine ganglion works on our lacrimal and salivary glands. And most importantly, the vagal nerve innervates the heart, the bronchioles, and the GI organs. So what have we learned here today? We've learned that the parasympathetic nervous system uses pre-G neurons with long axons to release acetylcholine which then binds to nicotinic 2 receptors in the ganglia on the post-G neurons. So these post-G neurons, once, they are, once their N2 receptors are activated, they will release acetylcholine of their own via their beaded varicosities onto our muscarinic receptors which are located on the target tissue. This is what will give us our desired parasympathetic effects. Lastly, please remember that the vagal nerve delivers parasympathetic response to the heart, the bronchioles, and the GI system when it is activated. As always, thank you for taking the time to learn with us today, and remember to like and subscribe for more content.